Welcome to the Upgrade Solar Power Channel. I'm Amelia and this is where we talk about practical everyday uses for power stations and portable solar panels and help you learn how to get the most value and use out of these amazing devices. If you want some great tips and tricks and creative ideas like these, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything exciting. And if you like this video, the easiest way to let me know is to throw me a quick thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments. And today we're going to experiment and see how long it takes to charge up this Opez Exodus 1200 with this Zoop W200 watt suitcase portable solar panel on a beautifully sunny day. So now let's go ahead and get started, guys. So we're going to start with unboxing this Soup W 200 watt portable suitcase solar panel, which I am so excited about. Let me tell you, especially because I love our 450 watt Soup W portable suitcase panel. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how well this one performs as well. So first off, it comes with a 20 amp PWM solar charge controller. So you can charge a 12 volt AGM or a lithium iron phosphate battery up with this solar panel. So that's a pretty cool bonus because one of these chargers would cost you 20 to $30. It also comes with a cable with an SAE connector on one end and alligator clips on the other. And last but not least, it also comes with a five in one solar charging cable as well as a whole bunch of adapters that could fit any power station on the market. This cord alone would cost you 20 to $25 and you will need an adapter cord and not every portable solar panel comes with this. For example, we have several Metrenergy portable panels that cost way more than this one does and they don't come with either the adapter cable nor a charge controller. So these extra items add up to 40 to $50 and are either incredibly useful or even necessary, depending on what you want to do with it. So in my opinion, that's still really cool. And it also comes in the sleek looking carrying bag that seems to be nice and durable and should last you a really long time. Overall, I think it performs well, looks nice, is durable, and comes with 40 to $50 worth of extra goodies. And that makes this a no brainer if you ask me, especially in comparison to regular fabric type style portable solar panels because those can be a lot more floppy and harder to work with because of the fabric. The Zoop W ones are designed to be more rigid and won't rot in the sun because they're made with no fabric on them, which gives them the ability to last a lot longer. So now I have it connected to my solar panel tester and it's getting a max of 171 watts which is 85.5% efficient, which is above the average of 70 to 80%. And how I figured that out is I just divided the actual output by the rated output. So 171 divided by 200 equals 0 0.855, AKA 85.5% efficient. So now that we have tested it out with my solar panel tester, we're going to go and test it out with our power station now. So to do that, I'll be connecting the MC4 connectors to the 7909 adapter and then plugging that into the power station. And as you can see, the power station is only currently at 27% and now connected to the panel, it's getting 153 watts and it's currently 1240. So we will check back in an hour to see where the battery life is at. It's 140 now and it's been an hour um, since I first started testing it out and the power station is at 42% and I'm getting 145 watts in and the sky seems clear of clouds, which is good. So I will check back in in another hour to see how well it's progressed. It's 240 now and we're two hours into testing and the power station is currently at 54% battery life and we're only getting around 124 watts max since it's later in the day. So I am going to reposition the solar panel to see if that'll help get some more solar coming in. And I'll check back in another hour to see. It's 3.40 now and we're three hours into testing and the power station's at 66% and we're currently getting a max of 158 watts. So repositioning the solar panel definitely helped. So I do feel pretty confident we'll get the power station close to 100% battery life now, but you're definitely gonna wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it does or not. So 
So it's 440 now and we're four hours into testing and the power station is at 78% battery life now and currently we're getting a max of 137 watts which is actually really good for it being almost 5 p.m. I mean mind you I do live in sunny Arizona but still that's really good and I am actually quite impressed by this. So I will check back in another hour to see where the power station's at. So it's 5.40 now and we're at five hours into testing and I'm at 90% battery life and I'm still getting 94 watts, which is actually so exciting to see, um, especially because again, it's almost six o'clock and I'm getting 94 watts. Okay, so it's 6.19 p.m. now and this is where I'm going to stop because the sun's going down over by the hill and it's shading the panel. So I'm no longer getting any solar. But we are at 91%, which is close to the 100% that I was really hoping to get. I feel like a lot of people don't stress the importance of having a solar panel on hand. And I can't say this enough either. Solar panels aren't just for people that live off grid. Trust me. Because it's one thing to be prepared and have a power station as backup for an emergency situation for a day or two. And then it's a totally different story though when you are also prepared to charge that power station up with a solar panel. When you need to go multiple days of using your power station during an emergency situation. The amount of peace of mind you will have with a solar panel as backup is huge. Especially if you don't want to pay a zillion dollars for a battery backup for your power station which can cost about a thousand to two thousand dollars in comparison to a solar panel like this one which only costs around two hundred and fifty dollars especially when it performs as well as this one does i was um getting 154 watts at the beginning when i first started at 12 40 and then towards the end of the video i was getting 94 watts at 5 40 pm and i was able to get the power station charged up from 27 percent to 91 percent in 5 hours and 39 minutes which is pretty good when the battery capacity of this power station is 992 watt hours so yes i am generally impressed by the solar panel and i'm really looking forward to using it more in the future videos so i will link the solar panel in the description down below if you want to check it out yourself or you want to get one yourself i believe amazon has a coupon you can use to save you some money so be sure to check it out using the link down below to see what the current price or deal is and i will be making an upcoming video with the zoop w 350 watt solar panel so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to see how well that one performs and if you want to watch my giveaway video you can click here and if you thought this solar panel performed well, man, you should watch my Zoop W 450 watt solar panel video because that one really puts out the power even when it's cloudy. And you can click here to watch that one. And that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.